Hey guys, this is Came for 15 back at it with another video for you guys. And Clipper fans, I am back. Um, I know I could have been reporting news about, you know, the signings and the pickups and, you know, everything that's been happening. Um, but I wanted to get just a video where it's a gang of news where I we have something to talk about, a topic to talk about for about maybe 20 minutes or, or so. Anyways, um, Obviously, Clipper fans, welcome back to the channel. Um, uh, hit that subscribe button if you want to get more Clippers content. Um, I do plan on doing some game recaps. Not every game of this upcoming season, but every now and then a game recap. But as well as um, hello to other NBA fans um, who like the NBA. Um, I'm Game for 15. I am predominantly you know, like to follow the Clippers because they're my favorite NBA team. I know. You can rip me for whatever you want, how you become a Clipper fan. Um, so long story short, my first game, my first NBA game I've been to was a Clippers preseason game. Ever since then, I've been a fan of the team. So um, you can't really say like, oh, you're just a bandwagon fan. Anyways, anyways, anyways. We're here to talk about the Clippers and some of the free agent moves as well as the two draft picks they acquired in this draft. Um, so. Let's get into it as well as, we'll also talk about some of the players they did as well lose in free agency. But so far, so good for the Clippers free agency, especially yesterday with the new signing of Ibaka. Um, for a majority of the part, the offseason for the Clippers wasn't looking, well, fine. It was all right, but it's like, okay, we're not addressing needs that we need to get. We're having players go off the board, and, you know, I'm just over here sitting, I'm like, okay, Clippers, you guys gonna do something or are you just gonna sit idly by, you know, and stuff like that. And only, you know, up to this point before the Ibaka move, the only real main move we made in free agency was for the Luke Kennard deal. But I'm gonna talk about the draft stuff first. Anyway, the, um, the Clippers, their first draft pick is, uh, or their first draft pick of the season was uh, Daniel Otoru who comes from the University of Minnesota. Um, he is a center. His stats from last season was he was a 20 point per game scorer. He had 11.3 um, rebounds a game. Um, some other accolade stats, he was all Big Ten second team in 2020, all American third team in 2020, and all Big Ten defensive um, team in 2020. Um, I don't know if we'll get you know, on the roster, he might be, you know, in the developmental side, um, depending if the G League um, plays this season as well. But um, it seems like it's going to be a solid pick and could be a nice solid backup pick whenever the time is right for um, the Clippers to maybe say want to bring him up and give him a chance. Um, like, a, like, you know, our coaching staff. Our coaching staff is, uh, is honestly a legit, really good coaching staff. We have Ty Lue at the helm, you know, um, Sean C. Billups is one of the assistant coaches. We have Kenny Atkinson, Dan Craig, who I'm shocked we got from the Miami Heat. And, you know, mostly Dan, Dan Craig and um, Kenny Atkinson, they can take the more approach of also, you know, coaching the team, but also develop, help develop these players. And hopefully maybe some of these young players do get some reps um, for this Clippers team. Because the one thing about Doc was he never played the young guys. Well, it didn't matter what, you know, roster we had, unless you gave Doc Rivers the roster where it was just kind of a bunch of just dudes, um, he would be forced to play those young guys because he has no choice. But when he had legit, like, top tier talents like the Lob City Clippers and even this past season's Clippers, he essentially refused to play the young guys, which, essentially is one of the main reasons why the Clippers ended up firing Doc Rivers because they wanted their young players to at least get some game reps and see some, you know, development and some progression. So the future of the Clippers, you know, if it doesn't work out, isn't so like bleak. And you have some of these young players, you know, playing in this on this Clippers team and they have no experience. So it is what it is. Um, I think I'd like to pick, he could be a nice backup center you know, like I said, if developed right, um, and then if the Clippers do take time with him in development, he might be a good backup to Zubak. Um, the second draft pick we had 
which essentially led to the trade of, you know, Canard and stuff like that, or, you know, and losing Shaman, which I'll get into later. Um, we essentially flipped picks. Um, we had drafted a center from Mississippi State, but we flipped picks with the Brooklyn Nets, and inst instead we got um, Jay Scrub, um, who actually, when I was watching the draft, um, seems like this could be, you know, a potential, you know, really good player if, you know, given time, if given development, he might actually turn out not to be like a star player, I don't know, but a really good NBA player. Um, so he's from John A. Logan, or Logan's College, which I believe is a JUCO. Um, he's a guard. Um, his stats from last season was 21.9 points per game. He had 6.8 um, rebounds, had 2.7 assists. Um, some accolades are he was the player of the year in the NABCNJCAA um, last year, as well as the NJCAA D, um, D1 All-American first team um, 2019 and 2020. So um, from what I heard from the little things about the draft, this kid looks like he's got some pretty good potential to be a pretty solid player for the Clippers. If the Clippers want to give him a shot and bring him up on the roster and, you know, give him his shine, you know, he might actually be a pretty good player. And from the things I've heard, if he can do the things he was doing in college on the big stage, that could definitely be a nice little help for Kawhi and Paul George, um, definitely. Um, so I'm very interested in this pick. A lot of Clipper, you know, analysts, and fans are actually pretty psyched that, you know, we got Jay Scrub. He seems like, like I said, he might be a legit, decent, really good player. And who knows, maybe he might turn out to be maybe a star player if given the time. We're just going to find out, you know, what happens, what his deal is. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll just have to see. We'll just have to see. Um, what he does, like I said, it's gonna be hard for him to get some playing time. Um, you know, right now, technically the only guards we have on the team are Kennard, Beverly, Lou Williams, Terrence Mann, Amir Coffey, and him, I believe, um, right now on the team. So we're just going to find out. Um, so far, it'd be hard for him to get, you know, some playing rest, but who knows? Maybe if he does good, you know, maybe in summer league and the Clippers like, hey, let's bring this kid up and let's see what he's got. Um, who knows? We'll, we'll have to see. Anyways, 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 let's get to the main thing. Clippers free agency. And that's really who did the Clippers acquire this free agency um, as well as who did they lose in free agency? Now, let's start off the major. Well, one of the big things the Clippers did this free agency is in the draft, they traded um, for a player and they got Luke Kennard who are the yeah they got Luke Kennard from the Detroit Pistons a lot of Detroit Pistons fans are very and I mean very sad that they lost Luke Kennard and essentially in return we got four second round draft picks but at the same time um we lost Ronnie Magruder um Landry Shamit uh, yeah Ronnie Magruder and Landry Shamit um, we also received Justice um, Justice Padden in the deal as well. Um, I forgot to mention. I don't know much about um, Justin Padden, or I think it's Justice Padden. Um, so I don't know much more. But really, the big eye candy of it is really Luke Kennard being essentially flipped for Rodney Magruder and Landry Shamit. Now, Rodney Magruder, he got traded to the Pistons, while Landry Shamit got traded to the Brooklyn Nets. So I'm gonna talk about um, the I'm gonna talk about Magruder and Shamit. Um, Magruder, um, listen, you know, we thought Magruder would kind of somewhat work out, but he really didn't. Um, I'm kind of glad that Magruder's gone because he didn't really bring much of anything. He was morally just a defensive player um, who just really came in and you know he did get some playing reps, you know, as the year started off, but. You know, as you could see, he was clearly not doing enough to stay in the rotation, and he essentially became a bench player. So, um, yeah, but again, um, good luck to Rodney Magruder on the Detroit Pistons and whatever future endeavors he has going forward. That's all I can say. 
Now, Landry Shamit, um, when I first heard the news um, about Landry Shamit being traded away from the Clippers, I'm like, damn, like, why do we have to get rid of him? And I know, and this is when, you know, I was feeling this way, even though we got Luke Kennard back. And I'm like, I really wanted Landry Shamit to stay to see what he would have done in Ty Tyron Lue's system. And it seems like he was going to be given a big, or a much bigger role than, say, last season. Um, you know, I'm going to really miss Landry Shamit. He was, as you saw when he first came to the Clippers in the trade, I'm from, the, from the 76ers, he really did a lot. And, you know, he was a really good player. And then next, last year, you know, he was not really the same. And there is definitely multiple factors that can play into the aspect. Um, but, you know, the thing is, it sucks to see Shamit go because listen, I can't really fault him, but at the same time, you can fault him. Um, and he even, you know, accepted and owned up to the fact um, in a tweet, you know, a few, I think a day later, of, of him saying like, listen, you know, I just didn't make the shots when I was given the opportunity to make the shots. Maybe if I made those shots, I might still be here. Listen, um, I'm not gonna disagree. I'm not going to disagree. There was many times Landry Shamit was wide open for three and he missed shots. He did it sometimes in the regular season and he definitely did it in the bubble really also in the playoffs. Like there was how many times I could count he missed a lot of easy wide open three point shots that should have went down and should have been made. Um, and yes, listen, that was probably a part of the Clippers saying, listen, you know, we might need to cut ties with him because he had his chances to make three point shots. He didn't make them. And some of those three point shots, if they had went in against series, against some of those series, like against the Denver Nuggets, even though we did end up winning the Dallas Mavericks series, but most of the Denver Nuggets series, the game might have changed if he did hit those shots um, and stuff like that. Now, um, another reason why I really blame, or a reason why I think is the main culprit on why they let Shamit go, and I think it's just a facade, you can thank Doc Effing Rivers because that dude messed up his confidence the entire season for Landry Shamit. And when Landry Shamit first came here, he actually had a role. He was our spot up three point shooter. They had, you know, plays designed for him and he was integral to the offense. And if you don't believe me, go look at his stats from that year. And essentially go look at the plays he had that year. Last year, Doc Rivers totally just didn't create any plays whatsoever because Doc Rivers was essentially a coach that said, okay, Kawhi, Paul George, do your thing and you guys run the offense and we'll get through it. Even though the Clippers had a top, you know, I think the second ranked offense, you know, in the league, the thing is, you know, it was kind of predated on talent instead of just, you know, sets, you know, coachings and offensive plays, you know? Yeah, there would be times where you'd see Landry Shamit have a play designed for Landry Shamit get open, but sometimes he would make those three, sometimes he didn't make those three. But out of 10 times, you know, Doc Rivers never came up with plays for him. Um, and then two, he just, I feel like also lost his confidence from time to time because Doc Rivers would substitute him in all these different types of roles. Like, you know, you'd have, he would have him like sometimes being just the main defensive guy. Sometimes you'd have him just being like a dude just stand there and just get the, you know, pick up three and shoot it. Or some other BS Doc Rivers made him do. And you know, the rotation wise minutes he got from Doc last year, it wasn't like really good. Like there was sometimes he would be put into the game for like five minutes and then just get taken out of the game because, you know, it just, for some reason, Doc Rivers just didn't trust him. Um, again, the same thing with young players and Doc Rivers. Doc does not trust young players. Doc just goes with veteran player, veteran guys, which another reason why Zub, what happened to Zubats happened to Zubak. Um, you know, I, listen, I, I love Landry, but all in all, it sucks to see him go. I mostly, for Landry Shamit being gone, I blame Doc Rivers. 
That, the Landry Shamit thing was on Doc Rivers. And I can understand why the Clippers got rid of him, even though well, you can make a case like, well, it was Doc Rivers' fault that messed him up. Um, you know, but hey, that's the league. Sometimes, you know, if you don't perform to the expectations of what an organization is, you know, expecting of you, you're going to get cut, traded, or somewhere else, or, or, or like I said, or go somewhere else, essentially. And it sucks to see him go, and I, you know, hopefully, again, best luck and best endeavors to Landry Shamit in Brooklyn. I think if Brooklyn, you know, creates plays for him, where he's going to be that three-point shooter, he's going to be wonders for Brooklyn. I really do believe. It is. It was also said he did practice with Kevin Durant in L.A. in the offseason, so it seems like he's got a connection with Durant. So good luck to him in his future endeavors. I hope he does well for the Brooklyn Nets and, you know, resurrects, I want to say, you know, gets out of the downlight of his career. Um, so, yeah, but that's a very talented player we lost. But in return, we got Luke Kennard. Um, and personally, if you ask me, Luke Kennard is going, is essentially um, right now at this point in time, um, it's the much better Landry Shamit because this dude for the Pistons was legit freaking killing it. This dude was hitting threes. He was actually a pretty good playmaker. He could drop, he could put the ball on the floor. He was really good for the Pistons. He was really good. His role might be diminished a bit in terms of also how his points are averaged, but, um, this was a good, solid pickup for the Clippers because they got a nice three-point shooter here. Anyways, I got some stats here. Luke Kennard in 28 games um, last season had 15.8 points per game. And his three-point percentage was 39.9. And his field goal percentage was 44.2. Um, so they're all actually pretty good stats for uh, Luke Kennard. And, you know, right at this point, I'd say he's a better player than Landry Shamit. Um, so... I think the Clippers won the trade of this because you got, you know, Lou Kennard and all as well. You flee somehow the Detroit Pistons. I don't know what's going on in Detroit. Apparently they want to run big man because they're playing people like Miles Plumley almost damn near half their damn salary. Um, I don't know how you fleece them because they got, the Clippers got four second round draft picks, you know, so you know, now you can use maybe those draft picks and maybe in a trade way, maybe near the trade deadline. You know, who knows? Um, like I said, Luke Kennard, it looks like he's going to be a good player. Now, the only concern is about Luke Kennard that I have been seeing is injury history. Um, like I just said, he only played 28 games last season. Um, you know, if he stays healthy and he isn't missing a lot of games for a majority of the Clippers for the season, I think you can say that was a pretty solid move by the Clippers. But if he plays essentially, like I just said, around, you know, 28 games, not getting a lot of gameplay or game time to play in because he's missing games with injuries, then you can just look back at this trade and be like, okay, this trade is actually not that good because he's failing to stay healthy. And the Clippers, we know their history from last year, they barely failed to stay healthy. And it was a shock that they even finished second in the Western Conference with all the injuries they suffered. So hopefully Kennard is, I'm praying, healthy throughout the entirety of the season. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna get into some other players um, that left off. That's the left off, even though I wanna talk, talk about Ibaka. Um, I believe after that, we re-signed Marcus, or no, we re-signed Patrick Patterson. On um, Patrick Patterson, Obviously, he's probably going to be a nice role bench player. Maybe he'll get some reps in game here and there. He's a pretty good player for the Clippers. I thought he did actually fairly good when he came in. You know, he wasn't the best defensive player, but at least he did something somewhat on defense. But offensively, you know, every time I saw him shoot the ball, he honestly made a corner three. So um, I think bringing Patrick Patterson back is good. Plus, it keeps the whole chemistry thing intact. And I did hear he, he was pretty good in the locker room with some of the other players. Um, the next guy that returned to the um, Clippers is Marcus Morris, who signed a four-year, I believe, $64 million deal. Now, some people um, did not like this deal. Um, now, that's mostly because of outside NBA fans um, that are saying that. Um, listen. Oh, and I'll get to Jermichael Green soon. 
But the one thing the Clippers had to do was get Jermichael Green and Marcus Morris back on this roster because they did really good in their roles in the roster. And we later found out that Jermichael Green left um, the Clippers for the Nuggets. Um, but, you know, guess what? The Clippers had to do this move. So some NBA fans may not like the fact that the Clippers gave him $64 million, but listen, the Clippers had to give him that money. They had to bring either him or Jermichael back. Because if they lost both of them to free agency, then we have a whole, you know, bunch of problems. Even if they were to sign a Baca later on, it's like, well, now you just lost two guys that were kind of integral to your team. At least you got back one in Marcus Morris, who actually played really good for the Clippers. Now, he didn't start off too hot, but as the season progressed, you know, he started to get a rhythm and he started to be good. And actually in the playoffs, he was actually, you know, really good for the Clippers in the bubble. Um, you know, I don't I'm, I don't have his stats, but he was really good. He played some pretty effective defense. And he honestly, you know, when it came time, you know, he hit some shots. He hit some big shots. Um, and listen, I like Marcus Morris to the team. It gives him the chance to come back and give it another round of a go with this team with this team constructed. And I like the fact that Marcus Morris was willing to run it back with this team instead of, you know, leave like some other players did leave. Um, I know I'm not trying to throw shade, but um, regardless, um, he wanted to run it back with this team and I can respect him for wanting to run it back. He got paid, he got his money, and now he's gonna be here in LA for the Clippers in the long run for the next four years. Um, so the next thing, like I said, I just talked about it, Jermichael Green. Jermichael Green, he left the Clippers for the Denver Nuggets. Um, just like Landry Shamit, it sucks for Jermichael Green to go. Um, again, if you are just a regular NBA fan who doesn't or never watched the Clippers play basketball or just watch like one or two, maybe 10 Clipper games last season, um, you if you were to watch an entire, if the entire season of the Clippers, you can see that Jermichael Green was a really good player for them. Um, he was a very tough guy and, um, you know, nine and 10 times, he hit some really good three-point shots. Like, he was a good spot of three-point shooter. He was a definitely, what you would say, a three and D player. Um, and listen, the Clippers are gonna miss that um, from Michael Green. That, honestly, I would say out of all the moves, will probably hurt the most. Um, Despite what you say, Montrezl Harrell, some people will say Montrezl Harrell is going to hurt the Clippers more than Jermichael Green. I say no, personally. Um, Jermichael Green still isn't going to hurt, you know, him leaving. It definitely also hurts that he joined the freaking team that, you know, beat him, um, which is the Denver Nuggets. So the Denver Nuggets are getting a really good player in Jermichael Green. Um, so, and essentially that kind of, Jermichael Green, Jermichael Green for the Nuggets essentially replaces what um, Jeremy Grant was for them, essentially. If not, you can say might be better. Um, like I said, he was a tough player. He got them tough, great rebounds. And heck, he can guard, he can guard, honestly, the five position, you know, if, in a small ball lineup. And he, he he was really serviceable with the Clippers. Just like Landry Shaman, he wasn't given, given enough time by Doc Rivers. Um, he definitely should have played more minutes in the playoff round against the Denver Nuggets than Montrez Harrell, who we'll get into in a few minutes. Um, but again, Doc stuck to his guns and he didn't want to play him. And, you know, Jim Michael Green might be another casualty of, hey, we might need to move in a different direction. But yeah. Anyways, the next big news, which was probably one of the biggest news at the time of its announcing, is that Montrezl Harrell is leaving the Clippers to go down the hall to the, op to the other Los Angeles team that recently won their championship, the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, obviously, as a Clipper fan, what do you think my thoughts on this? Um, now, when the season ended, um, again, check out my last Clipper video um, in regards to, I believe, what the Clippers should be going in the direction the Clippers should be going. I said the Clippers need to get rid of Montrezl Harrell because his deficiencies were very talented and very showing in the playoffs. Um, and listen, Montrezl Harrell leaving the Clippers, I'm fine with that. I don't know if I'm fine with him leaving the Clippers for the other Los Angeles team, the Lakers. 
Now, if you ask me personally, I think Rich Paul, his agent, because he's a member of Clutch Sports, got up in his ear and said, these guys don't need you. They were talking, they're the ones bad-mouthing you, even though technically, from behind the scenes, from what is reported, you know, it seems like he was the one that was creating the friction and the bad blood amongst the team. Um, you know, hey, there was few times and few games where, you know, I definitely could see there was times where him and Kawhi kind of butted heads mid-game. Um, and I think you can say Kawhi probably did not like playing with Montrez Harrell. Um, and I do think Montrez Harrell is probably the one player on last year's Clippers team that actually did think, you know, he was probably better than a Paul George and a Kawhi Leonard. Um, listen, I'm just going to shout that out. And him leaving? Fine. Leave. You know, you, you were good for us. I mean, we got you the resurgence. We got you the name you needed. But when it came up big in the most part, he didn't come and produce. And listen, you know, the Lakers, they're going to get a good energy player. They're going to get a good player in, you know, energy. I do think Montrezl Harrell will be definitely better utilized with the Lakers because unlike idiot Doc Rivers, Frank Vogel will realize the deficiencies Montrezl Harrell has. And if when Frank Grove, because you saw in the bubble, Frank Vogel, when it push came to shove to win for the team, he sat guys like a Dwight Howard and told him, no, we're going to go to a different direction. You need to sit here and be a team player because we need to go direction to win the series for the team. And to be honest, I personally can say if Doc Rivers said that same exact thing to Montrezl Harrell, I think Montrezl Harrell would not like that. And I don't think, I personally think Montrezl Harrell, as well as the fact he was in a contract year, I felt like he wasn't really for the team. He was really in it for himself. Um, because obviously he was trying to get a big contract. Um, but you saw, um, again, you know, I'll talk more about this in the Ibaka because definitely people are going to be asking, like, so who's better, um, Ibaka or Montrez at this current point in time? I personally believe Ibaka is the better player. Um, I'll get into that, the reasons why. Now, listen, um, to end on my demo, Montrez, listen, as much as I'm going to probably not like him anymore because he joined the other team, and essentially, he joined the clutch agency of LeBron um, because, let's be honest, he left the Clippers because, you know, any threat to LeBron, you know, Rich Paul's got to do his dirty dealings and freaking get in the way. Um, so hopefully maybe going forward, that maybe might show that the Clippers should probably not sign anybody that represents or represented by um, LeBron's agent company, Rich Paul and Clutch Sports. Um, I'm not going to call him a snake, but, you know, definitely, um, I will say Sundarius Dornwell, who now I have a much more respect. It seems like he really is going to, like, really is a clipper for life. That dude was essentially kind of ripping Montrez for being like, listen, I'm all for you wanting to leave the Clippers, but you join that team, the team that, you know, you were supposed to go up against and challenge, and now you join them. Listen. I personally, li listen, my thing to Laker fans is this. You can have them, but if you start to see those deficiencies, I'm just going to be the first one to say, hey, look, I told you. I told you guys so. He has clear deficiencies. He really does. But the Clippers need to move on from him, and I like the fact that they did move on from him. Because, listen, now you got Ibaka, which I'm going into. There's a Clippers signed Ibaka to a two-year, $19 million deal, which I believe is the non-taxpayer mid-level exception. He essentially confirmed that he's coming to the Clippers last night, which, you know, at the time I was like, okay. So, um, you know, yet all these other players, all these other big men got the board. And I'm over here sitting here. I'm like, okay, uh, are the Clippers going to do something? Because at this point, it's Ibaka or bust. And if we lose out on Ibaka, we might be in some trouble now. Um, because, like I said, to this point, the Clippers' free agency, yeah, it's – Nice, or it's okay, but you're still not addressing the needs that you need and stuff like that. But then when the news came that Ibaka is going to be joining the Clippers, I was like, ah, good. I'm not saying, you know, the offseason move for free agency for the Clippers is done. They still got some things to do, like get a point guard. Um, definitely. Um, but I'm glad that they got Ibaka. And 
Um, some stats for Ibaka. Last year for the Raptors, he had 55 games played. He was 15.4 point per game score. Um, he was a 38.5% um, three-point shooter. Um, his field goal was 51.2 from the field, and he averaged 8.2 rebounds um, per game. Um, I think I, I really like this move by the Clippers. Um, one, you definitely can say Kawhi had some way to play because they played with each other back in Toronto. So you know that the reuniting of him and um, Kawhi and Serge Ibaka is definitely good. And I definitely can say the relationship um, Kawhi and Serge's relationship is definitely much better than the relationship Kawhi and Montrez had. Because there's very many times where you'd see Montrez and Kawhi kind of get at each other on court um, and stuff like that. Now, um, the thing is, with Ibaka, we're going to lose that blocking element because Montrez was more of a blocker. But the difference to Montrez Hare, the difference to Serge Ibaka to Montrez Harrell, which I say is, Abaka is the better player than Montrez at this current point in time is this. Many, many reasons, guys. And listen, if you're a Laker fan checking out my channel and you're just being ignorant and saying, ah, shut up. Serge Abaka is not no better than Montrez Harrell. Listen, I'm telling the rest of the NBA fans as well as Laker fans too, stop getting the bias of your hating towards the Clippers. Get that out of the way. Be objective and actually look at the stats. If you look last year, mostly in the playoffs, in the bubble, whether it was the Dallas Mavericks or the Denver Nuggets, Montrez Harrell was getting abused by big guys. He was getting abused by a, a Porzingis, a Boban Marjanovic, which I do love. If you're getting abused by Boban, dog, come on. And then, honestly, one of the most heinous crimes that Doc Rivers continued to keep going back to was Montrez versus Nikolai Jokic. There, there, there. Um, listen, Serge is taller than Montrez Harrell. You get a seven footer who can defend better than Montrez Harrell, who can, sh who can rebound better than Montrez Harrell who I would say might be much more of a better team player than Montrez Harrell. And let's be honest, he can shoot better than Montrez Harrell. Montrez Harrell is your typical guy who really only can make layups, floaters, or dunks. He cannot hit a shot beyond, you know, essentially six feet or near the rim, you know? And with Abaka, you get that shooting. He's got a pretty decent mid-range. He can hit the three-point ball decent as well. And he spreads the floor open for this team, um, which is good, which means, and also it's another big guy, which means this also helps Zubak in the case of, now you can, sometimes if you're going to be against some teams that are want to go big against the Clippers, you can say, okay, let's have Zubak out there and Serge Ibaka out there. You know, so and then you can, you know, have the Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, and whoever your point guard at that point in time is. You know, and ha you know, if Lou Williams on the team, you can have Lou Williams out there with that lineup because really the only deficiency is really Lou Williams on defense instead of last year would be like your depth close up lineup would be Montrez Harrell, you know, Morris, um, George, Leonard, and um, Lou, who are two, you know, deficient players on defense, Lou and Montrez. Here, you could possibly run, you know, that lineup. Instead of, this, instead of that, you take out Morris and you just insert Zubak. And you, now you got a pretty good, solid defensive, you know, you know, team right there. You know, Serge Ibaka can also provide rim protection, which even though Zubak is good at rim protection, they really never had a good backup to him that has good rim protection. Um, you know, like him. So that's another thing good. Like, you know, you know Ty Lue can use a Bach in so many ways. You can sometimes maybe put him, you know, in the starting lineup when teams want to go big against the Clippers. You know, you can put him on the bench and have the back, be the backup center and stuff like that. And like I said, he creates spacing for this team. So it can drag out, say, a center who might be guarding a Baca and bring him out. And guess what? 
the paint is more open where, you know, you can have more chances of players driving in and potentially going to get easier easier shots and maybe potentially getting fouled. So Serge Ibaka, I think, really fits well with this Clippers team, as well as he has chemistry with Kawhi Leonard. So Kawhi Leonard and him know how to play with each other. And that might be another thing, but like I said, Kawhi definitely had some word in bringing Ibaka here. I mean, probably had, was in Ibaka's ear like, hey, come over to the Clippers and join us, you know? And stuff like that. And like I said, I think Serge is the much better player than Montrez Harrell. And like I said, you gotta get your biases out the way, guys. I know, I like Montrez too. But listen, Montrez deficiencies are there. Serge Ibaka essentially cleans up those deficiencies Montrez Harrell had for the Clippers, which guess what? You essentially get a better version of a Montrez Harrell that can actually do the things that Montrez failed to do for you last season. So that was a good move by the Clippers. And that's really it in terms of news for free agent wise for the Clippers. Other than that, I like the moves. The Clippers still need to go out there and get a point guard. I don't know who's still there out there on the market. They might have to make a potential trade for a player. Um, listen, whoever the point guard could be, I don't know. Um, I, like I said, I could take Alonzo Ball if he's there. I would take, I would take him. Um, they gotta get a, they gotta get a point guard because that's what Kawhi Leonard asked. For. He wanted a point guard. So, you know, Rondo's off the mark because he left for Atlanta. Um, I figured he probably wouldn't go to the Clippers. Now, there were Clipper fans that didn't want Rondo, but I wouldn't mind if we had Rondo, but okay. Um, so, yeah. Um, and then, you know, that's really it. Um, only other rumblings I've been hearing is apparently Markeith Morris, who is the brother of Marcus Morris, apparently is interested in playing with his brother and might go play with the Clippers. I would like the move, um, you know, if he, and listen, you know, if, if Markeith wants to play with his brother Marcus, hey, more power to him, um, you know, let him. And maybe the Clippers can give him a look and be like, okay, you know, we'll bring you aboard. Um, I think he would be a nice solid player for them. Um, I don't know if he would get enough play time like his brother would, but you know, it'd be nice to have a Markeith Morris. Um, so, you know, who knows? Who knows? Um, he kind of already got his ring, so maybe he can come over to the Clippers and, you know, maybe help out in some sort of way. Um, like I said, if he wants to come play with his brother, there's no shame in playing with your family. Um, and plus, you know, they'd be essentially in the same city playing for the same team. And I believe they haven't played together with each other since, I think, Phoenix. So who knows? Um, that might happen. We'll just have to find out what goes on with that. But other than that, that's kind of it. So yeah, um, those are the Clipper moves. I think the Clippers, honestly, they're having a probably, all, if I were to grade them right now, it's a pretty, it's like an upper B minus B, you know, level off season for the Clippers. Um, they still got to get a point guard. We'll just have to see what they need to do um, regarding that information. So yeah, um, I think this team can be a combination of these veteran players as well as some of these young guys. So we'll, we'll just have to see what this team does and yeah other than that if you guys like the video leave a like put in the comment section if you're a clippers fan and your thoughts on the decision or if you're an nba fan what's your thoughts on some of the moves the clippers made this off season um and i guess i'll just point out the thing uh who do you you know prefer montrez or serge who thinks a better player um as well as hit the subscribe button to get more clippers content um i'll continue to put updates for clippers basketball out there so yeah, um, other than that, I'm gonna get out of here. Um, so yeah, that's all I gotta say. Um, again, this week is Black Friday week. Um, so good luck to you people that have or want a chance of getting a PS5. Fun fact, I actually did get me a PS5. I got me my PS5 literally two in the morning from Best Buy. Um, so I'm expected to get it on my birthday and I'm gonna be happy and I'm gonna be enjoying playing that. So other than that, guys, I'll catch you guys later. Hopefully, again, good luck to you guys who want a PS5. Get it. Um, it's going to be definitely hard to, but uh, maybe you might get lucky like me. Anyways, I'm going to get it for Catch you guys in the next video. Till then, guys, have a great rest of your day and stay safe out there. Peace.